Hi guys. So I am concluding Judges chapter 12 today. And here we see the end of Jephthah the warrior's leadership, which we talked in depth about Jephthah and all of his escapades. <laughs> um, and ultimately we see the end of his life. And so we know every time a judge dies here in the book of Judges, we have another judge taking their place. Um, and there seems to be a pattern, you know, the people of God, uh, they straighten up for a while under the judge, but then they get back to uh, disobeying God, just like all of us. So anyway, in verses 8 through 15 of Judges 12, we're told of three more judges who came after Jephthah and lead the people of Israel. Their names are Ibsan, Elon, and Abdon. Not sure if I'm saying those correctly, but. At first glance, oh, we see uh, that these three judges don't really seem very noteworthy. Um, nothing is really said of them at all, except that they judged Israel and that they had children and grandchildren and donkeys. <laughs> like, like that's like all it says about them. It doesn't say anything about what they did as leaders. And so what can we really say? of their leadership or even of this passage. And so, you know, I've considered this uh, little snippet here for several days and I even thought about, well, I'll just skip that because what, you know, what, I'll just mention it. It's a one-liner at the end of, of Jephthah's rule, right? Three more judges came and then Samson, right? We wanna get to Samson, right? So these three guys are in between two um, well-known, you know, leaders in God's kingdom, but nothing is said of them. And so I just thought on this and I thought on this and I'm like, what's to be said of these guys, right? Because they're there for a reason. They're, they're written down. You know, God wants us to remember who they were. So here's what I think. Um, there are two kinds of leaders. Essentially, there are two kinds of leaders who are remembered by everyone. Um, and that is of course, leaders who do exceptionally good things and leaders who do exceptionally bad things, right? So sometimes, oftentimes, some leaders find a way to do both exceptionally good things and exceptionally bad things at the same time or within the course of their role or their reign or their leadership. And so it's just like I always say, our strengths are our weaknesses, right? Extraordinary leaders tend to shine very bright, but fall very hard at the same time. So, but what of the ordinary leaders who lead? They have children and they die, like these three. That's who Judges 12, 8 through 15 shows us here. And dare I say, that is likely the vast majority of most of us who lead God's people humbly and in absolute seeming obscurity, even today, right? And, you know, I thought, you know, let's face it, all of us want to be significant. We want our lives to matter. We want to be known and remembered for something amazing that maybe we said or wrote or did. Um, we, we all kind of have that in the back of our mind. Yeah, one day, you know, people are going to remember me for this, right? Um, or at least remember us as someone who mattered, who changed the world, who did good in the world, who was a catalyst maybe for great and terrible ripples in the ocean of life, right? And maybe we all do that anyway in our small ways, and we're just not, we don't get to see the fruit of what all happens as a result of the things that we do. And I think that's true, but how many of us can really say with confidence that we will be remembered by anyone other than the handful of people who know and love us? How many of us will really be remembered for anything other than um, that we lived, we love the Lord, hopefully, we had children, and we died. And, and is that really, insignific really insignificant? Because that's the question I think God wanted me to consider when reading this passage that I didn't quite know what to do with. 
is that really insignificant to live, to love the Lord, to use your gifts, have children and die? That, that, that's what I see here. And so I think this passage really does have a twofold message for two groups of people. The first one is the one I've already mentioned. One is that leading God's people in seeming obscurity, which I think covers a lot of people who are leading God's people. So leading God's people in seeming obscurity while raising a family is still noteworthy enough to find the names of these men written in the greatest book ever written. You and I are still talking about them and still saying their names. And that leads me to believe that leading God's people in seeming obscurity while raising a family is not only noteworthy enough to find our own names written in the book of life, which is the ultimate goal, right? But that doing so is not by any means insignificant in the grand scheme. And I think that's something that we should consider. You know, I know for me, you know, it's, it's a battle. You're like, well, have I really, have I really done anything that even matters? Like I'm spending myself out here for people I'm never going to meet. You know, mo most of the people who read my blog, um, my life's work, I might call it, are in other countries. You know, and I think that's awesome on one hand, but on the other hand, I'm like, you know, I, I, I don't get to talk to them about theology. I don't, I don't get to disciple them in a, in a one-to-one -one way. And so it's some, it's somewhat of, of a struggle sometimes, you know, but anyway, that's me. But I, I think it's something worth considering. Um, serving the Lord, using your gifts while raising a family in a place where you're not, um, you're, you're just not, um, you know, seen or known well is something that's very, very important. And I think sometimes we lose sight of that because we have this false idea that it's only Jephthah and it's only Samson and it's only Deborah and Noah and Moses that matter. They matter, but so do these three guys that are mentioned here that we don't hear about. They matter and they were necessary and God chose them just the same to lead his people. And what an honor and what a privilege that really is for any of us, right? What a privilege. So that, that's lesson number one. And I think I would fall into that category. But secondly, I think the lesson is twofold here. I think the other group of people that maybe have a different takeaway from this is, is those that have gifts, have opportunities maybe to lead um, God's people or, you know, in some capacity and settle for something less than using those gifts. They settle for less than greatness and excellence, um, just out of comfort or um, indifference, laziness, um, unwillingness. To, to really do what God has called them to do. And so if you are someone who is called to be a warrior, to called to be a great leader like like Samson or, or, or Deborah or Jephthah, you would be doing a disservice to the Lord, uh, to his people, and ultimately yourself, you know, when you choose to hide in the bunker with only those people who you most prefer while failing to step out and do great things that God is calling you to do in faith. And I think there are some people like that. I, I see people that have just extraordinary gifts that really just don't want to step out in faith. They want to be comfortable with their few people that they know and just stay in their little corner. Um, and maybe it's outside pressure, or maybe it's it's family, or it's someone around them that doesn't want them to, to, to step out either because, you know, of fear and just, um, I don't know, insecurity, uh, pride maybe, I don't know. But 
I, I think there are some people who have extraordinary gifts, gifts far greater than anything that I have, um, that just don't use them. And, and I think that that's kind of tragic, you know. So there's a message there for them too, you know. Um, it's not insignificant to live, love God, have children, and die. It, it, it isn't. But if God's calling you to something that's extraordinary and you're saying no, that's also a problem. So I would say just think of this both ways. Because um, some of us need to learn that first lesson and some of us need to think about the second one and just adjust accordingly. So that's what I saw in that. I hope it's helpful. And I will see you guys later. Thanks for listening.